Hello and uh, welcome to Grace Baptist Church of Second Life. I know I say this every single week, every time I come together in front of all of you, but I honestly am humbled and, uh, uh, and blessed to see you all here this morning, and I thank you for coming um, to listen to us, to be here. It is, and it has been, my humble prayer that through this ministry that we are able to touch at least one person with the message of him who died for each and every one of us. We are a light. All of you here are lights in this dark world. Not just in Second Life, but in the real world. And as lights, it's our mission to point to the one true light that can erase all darkness, the light of Jesus Christ. And it's real exciting that I get the chance to come here and uh, teach you from God's Word, not mine, but from His. And, I, and I'm so excited to be here with you guys today. Now, before I do get started, though, I put my announcements up front while Michael Boyd puts them at the end, uh, but I'll try to make this painless. Monday through Saturday at 3.15 in the morning, which is 6.15 for me, so don't worry about it, I'm not getting up that early, but at 3.15 Pacific time, my wife, Michael Boyd, Dasha, and others uh, will meet together in the grass off to my right, your left, for morning devotional with our daily bread. Now, at this time also, every day at 5 p.m. Pacific time, we have something happening at the church, be it fellowship around the campfire, Bible study, or worship services that we have on Wednesday, Saturday, and Sundays at 5 p.m. We also have this service right now, our Sunday service at 5 a.m. worship for those that have difficulty getting here later in the day. Now this morning after service, I'll set partial media to play the live stream from my real life home church, Aaron Lakes Baptist Church in Fayetteville, North Carolina. So if all goes according to plan, you're welcome to come back here after this service and listen to Pastor Jeff as he delivers God's word at 6.30 and 8 a.m. Pacific. 6.30 a.m. and 8 a.m. Pacific. And, uh, and Pastor Jeff Eisenhower has a whole lot more experience than I do. He uh, he can get pretty red faced on the stage. My son is afraid, honestly afraid, that one day he is going to fall down and hurt himself seriously. To fall down and hurt himself. But before we get too far into the service, let us remember Him who created us and let us focus our attention on God above and we forget the distractions of the world to the sides. Let us pray. Father God, creator and sustainer of all that we see and experience, even here in this virtual world of second life, this morning we humbly submit to your teachings today. Father, it's our humble prayer that we take away from here a real-life message that we can use to touch real lives in a real way with the message of Jesus Christ. Today, Lord, we acknowledge our dependence on you and thank you for all the many blessings you have bestowed on us throughout the years. We are alive and present today to serve you. Lord, we pray that you can use us as your tools to reach a dying world and look forward to that day when you call the church to the place you have prepared for us in heaven. Father, be with me today as I present your words, not mine. Guide the listeners with the power of the Holy Spirit with your understanding and grace as we study the power, the supremacy of Jesus Christ over all things. 
We thank you, Lord, for the written word with the one single message, the message of the living word, Jesus Christ, our Savior. We thank you, Father, simply for everything. For it is in your holy and precious name we dedicate this service to you. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Now, as we've been doing in the past here, um, we're going to go ahead and get started with the music video on the big screen behind me to set the mood. Now, if you can't see the video in World, I'll go ahead and paste the link in open chat so you can watch it. You can watch it on YouTube. Um, but if you're listening on the live stream, the streaming music that's coming into the parcel. We'll go ahead and attempt to rebroadcast that song for you. So with that being said, let's watch the four-minute song, Yours Will Be the Only Name by Big Daddy Weave.
hello and welcome everybody again after that great song. Seems like everybody liked that song. I liked it. Um, tell you the truth, I don't pick the songs. I tell my wife the uh, topic for the, uh, the, the sermon that I'm prepared and my wife or my son picks the song. Today my wife actually picked that song and I can honestly say that she picks some of the greatest songs awesome songs. I'd like to say hello to everybody here today. Um, of course, my wife, Renee, is sitting up front. She's probably my biggest helper, with the exception of Bill Cockrell or Michael Boyd. Um, the, those three have been a real big, huge help around this church, and without them, um, well, I don't think this church would be what it is. also want to welcome psychiatrist um, from Europe, God bless you. I hope you're having a good time. Uh, Dasha, uh, Charity Hope, Jeremiah, um, Charity's husband, hello, back there. Faith, um, Adrian Pascal, Yavana, Ricky Copperfield, Tom, Sagan, uh, Sergei, you changed your name, but hello, God bless you. Um, and um, uh, Bobcat was here. I hope he comes back. Uh, he's a great, a great person. I like to to meet with him. And um, and then of course back in the back we have our two uh, ever present robots, um, Paraclete, who's sitting there on a text viewer, just waiting for someone to try and crash the sim, and Grace Baptist Church robot who works non-stop sending out notices all day long. And first and foremost, as Michael Boyd says, we welcome God to our service. For without God, this service would be meaningless. Without God, everything I say would just be simple words. But today... Especially for those of you that were here last week. Uh, but today I'm starting my second message on the book of Hebrews. And I've broken this down and I plan for this message to take about uh, six months. It's going to take uh, uh, quite some time to get through the book of Hebrews. In fact, six months will probably be a little bit too soon to get through with it. Uh, Last week I only did verses 1 through 3, and uh, um, today we're going to do 4 through 14 in chapter 1 of Hebrews. 4 through 14 in chapter 1 of Hebrews. I just cut and paste some information on, uh, on um, using voice. I'm also on streaming music, or if you click on that link... You can directly listen to what I'm saying without even being here in Second Life. I want to say hello to uh, the people that just got here or got back, um, Claire and August. Uh, God bless you. Uh, nice to see you guys here. So as we continue our work, <clears throat> excuse me, as we continue our work in the book of Hebrews, Today's message is titled, Jesus Christ, Superior to Angels. It covers Hebrews chapter 1, verses 4 through 14. Last week we talked about how Jesus was superior to the prophets of the Old Testament and superior to all that men had ever prophesied or wrote about. Now we're going to talk about the angels. But before we get started, I want to relate to you a story I heard recently about a young girl and her mother talking about Sunday school. This story is told of a young girl and her mother discussing the morning Sunday school class. The child told her mom that they talked about Jesus going up to heaven and that he is not sitting and that he is now sitting beside God the Father. As they continued to look at the Sunday school paper, the mother noticed a picture of a rainbow. She said, 
Look at the beautiful rainbow that God painted for us. The little girl replied, And just think, Mommy, God did it all with his left hand. The mother replied, What do you mean? Can't God use both his hands? The girl stated, Of course not, Mom. My Sunday school teacher said that Jesus was sitting on his right hand. So now with that short lesson from Sunday school, let's move on now to how Jesus Christ, God in the flesh, is superior to everything that has come before or after. Yet as we prepare for today's message, I want to remind you all, especially as we study the book of Hebrews with such controversial viewpoints in it, I want you all to remember that our purpose here is not to get lost in doctrinal details. First and foremost, this is a church of God's love. First and foremost, as Christians, we are to show God's love. We are not here to attack or defend some preconceived religious doctrine. In fact, I honestly dislike the word religion itself. Our purpose in this study of Hebrews is to hear God speak in Jesus Christ through the Bible and reach others with the good news. This is the primary mission of the church. We exist to reach a, hung a hungry world with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Remember the prayer of the Greeks that approached Philip with a question in John 12, 21. Sir, we want to see Jesus. If our purpose is to know Jesus better so that we can grow and become more Christ-like every day, that whatever differences we may have in our understanding of Hebrews in our understanding of Scripture must be forgotten in our worship of Him. Sir, I want to see Jesus. Let that be your humble prayer each and every day as we approach Him who is superior to the prophets and the angels. Read with me today. Hebrews chapter 1 verses 4 through 14. The passage is located at the top of your note card as I handed out when you came in or you feel free to read along with me on the note card. Good point. Michael typed in uh, open chat. Religion is man seeking God. Christianity is a relationship where God seeks man. Let us read. Hebrews chapter 1, starting at verse 4. So he became higher in rank than angels, just as the name he inherited is superior to theirs. For to who of the angels did he ever say, You are my son, today I have become your father. Or again, I will be his father, and he will be my son. When he again brings his firstborn into the world, he says, and all God's angels must worship him. And about the angels, he says, he makes his angels winds and his servants a fiery flame. But to the Son, your throne God is forever and ever, and the scepter of your kingdom is a scepter of justice. You have loved righteousness and hated lawlessness. This is why God, your God, has anointed you with the oil of joy rather than your companions. And in the beginning, Lord, just a second. In the beginning, Lord, you established the earth, and the heavens are the works of your hands. They will perish, but you will remain. They will all wear out like clothing. You will roll them up like a cloak, and they will be changed like a robe. But you are the same, and your years will never end. Now to which of the angels has he ever said, Sit at my right hand, until I make your enemies your footstool? Are they not all ministering spirits sent out to serve those who are going to inherit salvation? Let God add his richest blessings to the reading of his word. 
Now last week we covered the first three verses of Hebrews where the writer of this book laid out that as the creator and sustainer of all that we can see or imagine, Jesus Christ is vastly superior to the prophets that came before him. Today the writer tackles another issue of his time and our time to demonstrate Christ's superiority to even the angels. Angels were supremely exalted in the Jewish mind. They believed angels mediated between God and humanity and were God's messengers, his army. So if the writer is to present to the Hebrews and to us today the fact that Christ is the mediator of a better covenant, he had to show them that, as intriguing as angels are, Christ is superior to them. In Hebrews chapter 1, 4 through 14, the writer shows that Christ, the bearer of the new covenant, is better than the mediators of the old covenant, is superior to the angels of God. Now, <coughs> keep in mind here that while the original audience of this book were Jews raised under Mosaic law, as interpreted by the religious leaders of the time, there it is, again that word religion. The material within applies as much to the audience of the time as it does today. In the words of a good friend of mine here, Dr. Ralph Richardson, the outstanding doctrine throughout Hebrews is the superior person and the sufficient work of Jesus Christ. My first point here starts with verses 4 and 5. Here we present the Son's absolute superiority to the angels through His name. Once Jesus paid the ultimate sacrifice for the sins of humanity, He sat down at the right hand of the Majesty on high. We read that last week in Hebrews 1.3. Verses 4 and 5 go on to state, so he became higher in rank than the angels, just as the name he inherited is superior to theirs. For to which of the angels did he ever say, You are my son, today I have become your father, or again I will be his father, and he will be my son. The angels were called sons of God. They were ministers and messengers. As today, they are ministers and messengers. Christ is called the Son of God. Quite a difference. John MacArthur explains this passage in his commentary on Hebrews by stating, Jesus Christ is better than the angels, first of all, because he has a better title, a more excellent name. To what angel has God ever said, Thou art my son, today I have begotten thee? The answer is none. Of no angel had God said, I will be a father to him, and he shall be a son to me. The angels have always been but ministers and messengers. Only Christ is the son. The angels are created servants. When the eternal Christ came to earth as a servant, he came as the supreme servant. Jesus inherited his name because of his relationship with the Father. He assumed the title of God's Son and clearly acquired a far more excellent title than any angel. In his resurrection, he received back the glory he had voluntarily laid aside to become a man. Now these verses are of critical importance to our understanding of God and his omniscience today. Many people, many different faiths, not just Christianity, but different faiths around the world, place far too much importance on God and angels and their work in the world. Yes, angels are real. Yes, they are God's ministers and messengers even today. 
but they are simply that. God's servants, just as we are his servants, just as believers are his tools, so are the angels. These verses offer an effective rebuttal against any tendency to give unnecessary importance to angels. Jesus Christ, who died to set humanity free from the bondage of sin, is superior to angels. We do not worship his tools, we worship the living God himself. Moving on, verse 6 points to his superiority as the firstborn and is worshipped by the angels along with man when he returns. Um, I'm going to back up a little. Michael had a good point here. Uh, him bearing, being the, uh, the seminary graduate. Even some of the Jewish writings allowed the Jewish people to worship angels on behalf of the Creator. They believed that the angels were the mediator between them and God. But here in Hebrews, we're being demonstrating, the writer of Hebrews is demonstrating Jesus' superiority to even God. We don't have to talk through a mediator now. We talk directly to him, directly to the Creator. But back to our second point, verse 6. When God again brings his firstborn into the world, he says, and all God's angels must worship him. The title firstborn establishes the dignity of Jesus. It does not relate to the time that of Jesus being born first, but rather to his position, his rank, right, authority, and honor. Jesus, as part of the one true God, has existed before creation, before time itself. Yet as the firstborn, he is heir to all things and worthy of worship even from the angels. Christ humbled himself and became a man. He even lowered himself as a man to become lower than the angels. But even so, the angels are still to worship him. When we see the future event revealed to us by the Apostle John in Revelation chapter 5, he wrote, Again I looked, and I heard angels, thousands and millions of them. They stood around the throne, the four living creatures and the elders, and sang in a loud voice, the Lamb who was killed is worthy to receive power, wealth, wisdom, and strength, honor, glory, and praise. And I heard every creature in heaven, on earth, in the world below, and in the sea, all living beings in the universe, and they were singing, To him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb, be praise and honor, glory and might, forever and ever. It's Revelation chapter 5, verses 11 through 13. Even the angels are to worship Jesus. As we continue this passage, the writer speaks of the superiority of the nature of Christ. In these passages, immediately following God the Father's declaration to the angels, he says to the Son, Your throne, God, is forever and ever. And the scepter of your kingdom is a scepter of justice. You have loved righteousness and hated lawlessness. This is why God, your God, has anointed you with the oil of joy rather than your companions. As Jesus is the author of all creation, the angels were created by him. Verse 7 declares the angels are possessions of Jesus that they are his agents, that they are his spirits. As strong as fire and power, as swift as the wind in obedience, but they are unworthy of being compared in dignity and honor with the Son of God, Jesus Christ.
Here in verse 8 and 9, we are reminded of the nature of Jesus Christ as God. He is God. Here he is clearly called God by God the Father. Though difficult to understand, we see in here two essential elements of the one true God. God the Father and God the Son working together as one God, as the one God that he is. Jesus, as God, is ruler of all creation to include the angels. He reigns with a scepter of righteousness and is anointed with oil. Jesus is true, just, and absolutely righteous. The more we become conformed to Jesus Christ, the more we will love righteousness and hate sin. This is the main reason I included what I did at the start of the message. Excuse me again. It's early in the morning and I haven't had enough coffee to clear my throat. But this is the main reason I included what I said at the start of this message. I detest the word religion. Because to me it implies a man-made set of rules that we are to live by in order to become acceptable to God. <clears throat> religion in this form is flourishing in Christian and non-Christian faiths worldwide. Jesus asks us to study his word, to listen to his message through the power of the scripture and the Holy Spirit, and in doing so we are called upon to become more like Jesus every day. <clears throat> that is not to say that we don't slip up ourselves sometimes, frequently in my case. There are times when we let the power of this world distract us from the mission that he has given us. But overall, we are called upon to grow spiritually and do the good works that He, that God, has prepared for us before the creation of all things. Verses 10 through 12 speak of Christ's eternity. In the beginning, Lord, you established the earth, and the heavens are the works of your hands. They will perish, but you remain. They all wear out like clothing. You will roll them up in a cloak, and they will be changed like a robe. But you are the same, and your years will never end. Christ was in the eternal past, before the beginning, before time existed, he was. In the beginning, the Word already existed, and the Word was God, and the Word was God. The writer here writes clearly of the contrast between Jesus Christ and creation. He's not a creature. They're the works of His hands, and they will eventually perish. But He will remain. He is eternal, immutable. He never changes. The things that look so permanent will fold up someday, but Jesus will remain forever. The author points to his destiny and the destiny of the angels to finish this passage, demonstrating the superiority of Jesus to the angels in all things. From last week's message and today, the writer of Hebrews has clearly demonstrated Jesus' superiority in all things in creation. Verse 13 speaks to the eternal destiny of Christ. Sit at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. The reign of Christ is an eternal reign. The Apostle Paul states this clearly in his epistle to the Philippians. Chapter 2, verse 10, where he wrote, so that at the name of Jesus every knee will bow of those who are in heaven and on earth and under the earth. To Christ all authority is, is given and in return Christ gives all authority back to the Father for him and they are one. 
Verse 14 concludes with the destiny of the angels. They, that is the angels, are God's tools to serve not only Jesus, but those that believe. Are they not all ministering spirits sent out to serve those who are going to inherit salvation? The ministry of angels is to protect and deliver the saints from danger. When asked how he survived the night in the lion's den, Daniel answered simply, My God sent his angel and shut the lion's mouth. They haven't hurt me, for I was found innocent before him. Also, I have not committed a crime against you, my king. His deity is established by divine names, Son, Lord, and God. By his divine work, he created the universe and sustained it. He redeemed humanity through his sacrificial death on his return and will return directly to rule over all creation. By his divine attributes, his omniscience, his omnipotence, his unchangeableness. And by the worship that he deserves from all creation, including the angels. This book means so much to me because we see here that the writer pretty much as we get farther into the book of Hebrews, he sums up the Old Testament. And he demonstrates, although the Old Testament is important and crucial to our understanding of Christ, that the New Testament, that Jesus Christ is superior to anything that has come before. Drawing heavily, or drawing heavily on the witness of Old Testament revelation, the writer of the book of Hebrews demonstrates the uniqueness of his son. The title son and, and, and the concept that it involves that as the son of God he is God elevates him above all comparison with the angels. Those who see in Hebrews ties with secular Judaism point to the highly developed um, angelology of the Jewish faith. How they mediated and they prayed to the Jews. And these verses offer a rebuttal against any tendency to put the Jews or put the angels higher than God. God is superior to all that we have. In these first 14 verses of the book of Hebrews, that is one certain thing that has been revealed to us, is that God is superior to the prophets. God, as Jesus Christ, is superior to the prophets. And Jesus Christ, as God, is superior to to the angels and all that has come before him. As we get ready to close in prayer, I encourage you to come forward and kneel here in front of the stage or simply prayer wherever you are. This is a virtual world and I want you to be comfortable in whatever you're doing and however you're doing it. Wherever you are, let the power of God fill you here in Second Life and back home where you are. I don't intend for this to be role play. This prayer is for you as much as it is for me. And I honestly and simply pray that you can let the power of God fill you. Know that wherever you are, whatever you're doing, know that God loves you. 
and always, always hears your prayers. Let us pray. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for the truths revealed in your word. I thank you for the message laid upon us this day and pray that your words do not leave her empty, but go forth to accomplish your goal. Father God, we humbly ask that this message helps change lives, not just here in the virtual world of Second Life, but also in the real world wherever the people here may live. Lord, we pray that you use us as your tools to reach others with the saving knowledge of the gospel of Jesus Christ. As we continue in prayer, I ask the people listening, I ask God in humility to open our hearts to his message to us. Perhaps someone here is lacking that deep personal relationship with Jesus Christ our Creator. Perhaps there is someone here that didn't quite understand the concept of the superiority of God over all things. <clears throat> the concept of God in relationship to the rest of creation. <clears throat> As we continue in prayer, I ask God to open our hearts to his message to us. Perhaps someone here is lacking that deep personal relationship with Jesus Christ our Savior. They have never committed their life to him. If that is you, if you are in need of his forgiveness and grace today, and you would like to be made clean and whole, I ask you simply to embrace the truth of Jesus Christ. I implore you, if you desire a relationship with Jesus, if you would like to take that step today to commit your life to Him, join me in saying this prayer. Say quietly under your breath the words I'm about to pray, or say them in your own words. But this is the idea. We're looking to ask God into our life to turn from sin and turn to God. Heavenly Father, I have sinned against you. I want forgiveness for all my sins. I believe that Jesus died on the cross for me and rose again. Father, I give you my life to do with as you wish. I want Jesus Christ to come into my life and into my heart. This I ask in Jesus' name. Father God, as we continue in prayer, we thank you for the opportunity to let us worship together in your name. We thank you quite simply for everything, for as the creator and sustainer of all that we see, even here in Second Life, we acknowledge our dependence on thee. Strengthen us, Lord, as we go out into the world. Let this message today reassure us of your presence even when the enemy is knocking at our door. Guide us in all that we do. Use us as your tools to shape a dying world and bring others to the gospel message of Jesus Christ our Savior. We thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to study this book written to the Hebrews that's included in the Bible. We thank you for the author, whoever it may be. We thank you for his teachings and the simple truth that we have seen here at the beginning of the book that Jesus Christ is superior to all that came before it. Father God, you know that the Old Testament is a major portion of my old of my of my uh, my studies, and that I believe in the Old Testament. I believe strongly the Old Testament is a is is a source of history and inspiration to Christians worldwide. But in this book of Hebrews, we are taught clearly that Jesus Christ is the end times revelation. That Jesus Christ has finished the revelation and has brought us in full circle to complete what we have to learn. We thank you, Lord, for the New Testament. We thank you, Lord, for, for Jesus Christ and all that he has taught us. And we pray that... He, he, through the Holy Spirit, continues to guide us and teach us as we study your word today. 
We know, Lord, that you speak to us, that you speak to us primarily through the written word of the Bible. You speak to us through other people. You speak to us through encounters in our lives. And you speak to us through prayer. We love you, Lord, and we thank you so much for all that you've done for us. And pray that you continue to guide us and keep us safe as we continue to work for you. I pray that we all remember that you are the creator and sustainer of all things. And give glory to God, to Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. As we continue in prayer, and before we, uh, I mean, we're not praying anymore. Why did I say that? As we close, um, just before I leave, I'm going to go ahead and uh, set the parcel media for my real life church that I'm going to have to take off to in about uh, 10 minutes or so. Uh, but I want you to know, and I want to ask you, if any one of you prayed to accept Jesus into your life for the first time, please feel free to I am myself, Pastor Michael Boyd. Uh, we have Bill Cockrell um, here, or my wife, if you feel like talking to a female, Renee Sargent is sitting up front as a rabbit. Okay, um, and uh, we uh, we just pray that you um, I am us, and we will talk to you as soon as possible. Know that God loves you all and cares for you deeply. I ask you if you accepted Jesus Christ in your life for the first time today. At the very least, I pray that you make your way to a real-life Bible-believing church and talk to the minister there. While our salvation is assured when we put our trust in Jesus, He, that is Jesus, asks us to make public our faith, to make a public confession of faith to help others that do not yet know Him. While I strongly believe in the ministry and witness of the many Christian workers in Second Life, it is yet too easy to hide behind your keyboard. I have met too many people in Second Life that role play Christians. God is real and God loves you beyond measure. Share your faith with someone else, even with a friend. Share it with someone in real life that can strengthen you in your walk with the Lord. Michael Boyd posted a link thegoodnews.org thegoodnews.org um, it also comes with a phone number 1-888-JESUS-20 1-888-JESUS-20 you can call and talk to people or if someone's online you can chat to people or just email them questions about Jesus if you don't feel comfortable with talking with someone here in Second Life it's totally anonymous you just call and talk to them and um, and just find out what you can. Yes, it is a U.S. number. Um, and uh, um, I'm sorry, but right now the goodnews.org is working in the United States. If you live outside of the United States, I can and have found um, I can and have found places for people outside the United States that they can go to. So you're more than willing to, to uh, talk to me or send me a note card. I'm, I'm getting ready. I'm trying to type this web page in. Okay. Uh, Claire, I will do my best to find something for you in German. I don't have it with me um, offhand, but I will do something. I'll do my best to find something in German. This concludes 
my voice portion for today. I ask you to feel free to continue worship and prayer after I turn off voice and I'm going to go ahead and set up the parcel media. I understand, Claire. I'm going to go ahead and set up parcel media to play um, my home church, Aaron Lakes Baptist Church, and they should have music going um, once I set it up. Again, you're welcome. I am Michael Boyd, Bill Cockrell, uh, Nagley, she's not here right now, or uh, my wife, Renee. Um, at any time. The parcel is open for everyone to pray and worship 24 hours a day. Go with God, my friends. We'll be out in the front foyer if anyone wants to meet with or talk to us. God bless you all.